Hey, what's up? My name is Rodney Cooper. I'm the host of Locker Room Talk with Coop, and I got a great one that's coming in for you guys. I got my guy, the OG, Rock Rizard. Played the University of Alabama from 1999 to 2002. His sophomore year, he was all SEC first team. His junior year, he was a John Wooden Award finalist. After his junior year, he entered his name into the draft and got picked up in the second round as a 39th pick with the Washington Wizards. Played in many different countries overseas, was a 10-year vet. So I'm definitely looking forward to having a conversation with him. We both wore the number 21, and we both were lefties at the University of Alabama, so it's definitely going to be a fun one. And I hope you guys enjoy the show. So let's get it. So I got the OG. I got my guy, uh, Ron Grizzard. You know, both two ha- two left-handed guys, both wore number 21 at Bama. Welcome, bro. Welcome to the show. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, most definitely. So let's hop right into it. So with the show, man, the three things that I want to harp on uh, is to pretty much, you know, to entertain, inspire, and inform. So as far as with you being from, you know, Birmingham, Alabama, you know, playing in Central Park Christian and, you know, playing in the University of Alabama. Take me back as far as, you know, you being a kid from Birmingham, Birmingham Alabama, up to you deciding to play for the University of Alabama. Quietly, though, Bama wasn't my first choice. Oh, for, dang, for real? Okay. Because, um, I mean, the church I grew up in, um, the Cleveland family, I don't know if it's me, T.J. Cleveland played at Arkansas, coached at Arkansas. Okay. He said, uh, so that's, that's my guy. Like, we first started playing ball together at seven years old. Hey, okay. And his family is Arkansas down to a team. So basically, that was kind of all I knew coming up my first times. Like, yeah. Al Dillard was, uh, on Arkansas 94 championship team. And that's my OG. So Arkansas was kind of all I knew for a minute. But when it came down to recruitment, you know, got a lot of letters from Google schools, personal letters. And when it came time to make that choice, it came down to my mom and Coach Scott. Rest in peace, Coach Scott. Rara. Yeah. Rara was like, you're not going to UAB. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom was like, she didn't fly. And she don't like one of the so I'm like, okay, UAB is out. Right. No long car rides or flights. I wasn't going to Auburn. That's a question. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Who was there at Auburn at the time? Who was there? Who was coaching? Uh, Ellis. Cliff Ellis. Okay, Cliff. Okay, okay. So, that's the loose it was. Yeah, I got you. So, who was the pro you all um, at Belmont? Godfrey, Kelsey, Pearson. It was mostly Godfrey. Godfrey. If he had a chance, he followed us there when we went. Me, Irwin, and T. Me were freshmen together now. Okay. We also played A.U. together. Mm-hmm. I got you. So he was everywhere we went when he could be. I got you. And of course, Coach Scott. Yeah. So as far as, uh, you know, you growing up being a kid from Birmingham, Alabama, like for me personally, it was, Somebody or like an event that happened that made me, you know, flip that switch like, man, I need to take this serious. Or somebody, you know, come along my path to be like, you know, give me words of encouragement or be that guy to be that, be able to check me, you know, if I was like not going on the path that I need to go down. So I know you was talking about, you said TJ Cleveland, right? Right. Okay. So was he the guy that, you know, was the guy that constantly, you know, encouraged you or was able to check you, you know, from time to time or, what what person or like group of people was the the people that made that made the impact in your life growing up? I mean, growing up, it was more or less we had a good basketball foundation, good basketball yeah. background, and it was just we had guys in front of us who did it at a certain level, like Rocky Crawford as a quote of and Al Davis and they got a national nice championship ring. Yeah, and just looking at that when that ring came, we like. We just try to try to get it. Right. He would always tell us how the league was, how tough it was, and 
how competitive we ever worked out together. It was always the same way, uh, the competitive spirit. So that was kind of what we held on to. We had guys before us who did it in that league was successful. Mm-hmm. So we felt like we had to try to kind of go the same thing. Because, you know, they are now we do games. Oh, these guys from Burnley. Oh, you know another from the guy? Uh, Roger yeah. from football and I do. So you got to be putting on doing your thing. You can't, right. you can't bring the threshold down. <laughs> right. So I, I definitely tell, like, you know, kids all the time, especially parents, too, as far as, uh, you know, definitely allowing their kid to get that exposure and being able to see or touch their dream. You feel me? So I know as far as we do seeing those guys that, you know, them played at the highest level, you being able to actually, you know, touch that person or be able to see it up close, you know, that plays a, that plays a big part, you know, in a kid's, like, progression as far as, you know, any sport or any, any line they want to play in or, or pursue in. What you think about it's that? It's always needed. But it's tough at times when you don't have that out there. Right. You don't yeah. have that avenue. You don't have that guy that you can look at and think, hey, can you help me work on my right, work on my left, or help right. me finish at the basket? And you got to find a way to get it on your own. <laughs> right. So that's that's like that, that diamond in the rough type guy. But I just tell any kid, if it's an important time where an older guy, yeah. even though he hasn't played at the level you're aspiring to go, He's older than you, so he does have some intellect in the way you're trying to go. Facts. Don't burn your bridge with everybody. <laughs> right. Take a little bit from this person, live from that person, build your own, keep moving. Yeah. That's that's wisdom right there, bro. Like learn from mistakes of others. So you don't have to you don't have to live those same mistakes. So you already talking about as far as, you know, some advice you would give to a youngin. So uh as far as the young Rod Grizzard, if you can go back to that seven-year-old Rod Grizzard, like what, what advice would you give to him as far as, you know, your progression coming up? I just say more or less honor the work before the lights come up. Mm. Fact. I would practice, but I wouldn't practice anymore after we leave the gym. Mm. You, yeah. you feel like you, that was enough. But now you see kids who you know, got trainers, even though that was in the air when right. I came up. I'll probably work out more now being an ex-professional than I did as being a pro, which is crazy. Yeah. For one, I kind of know my body now, what my body kind of do, do certain things. I didn't know as a huge athlete because I pretty much went out of my training until I right. drank it. It is a, make sure you stress this part. After being a second year for you, it's just you. <laughs> yeah. work out. Right, right. And to figure yourself out, figure out, you know, what you need to do to recover. Mm-hmm. But just for younger me, just get in that work a little more. Because the game was kind of easy for me, young. Because right. I was a little bit athletic. And being left handed, you always. It's hard to guard, bro. <laughs> it's yeah. hard to guard. Yeah, me you hear that so know. much. I done played the whole game against a guy. And we just stand and shoot around and say, man, I ain't no good left hand. Yeah, right. You, like, what were you doing this whole time? You, <laughs> how do you know? Nah, no, right. You wasn't but passing to the scout report before the game or what? <laughs> yeah, just, just honor the work, man. Just keep working. Keep your head down. Keep working. Man. Don't look so forward to, to the glory of the earth. Just right. keep working. Just got somebody in front of you. They get an accolade. That's fine. You're talking about time. Just keep working. All right. Got you. So as far as like, I know like, a, of course, you know, work hard, put the work in, you know, make sure you have good grades. But what would you say, especially in this day and time, you know, the actual steps, you know, a kid can take to be able to position themselves to be able to play at the D1 level? Because, you know, I, I see a lot of parents as far as with, with AU basketball, like, of course, like growing up as a kid, like being young, like I, like I see as far as playing with the, like the local AU team, but I feel like you really need to start, you know, playing for like these sponsored, you know, AU teams as far as once you get like the ninth grade to be able to get that exposure, you know, to be able to put yourself in front of the coach. Cause I see a lot of kids now in high school, they play with these local teams and, you know, they're just playing in the area, but it's good to, you know, get, get those runs in, but you need to definitely get that exposure. Like that's why I try to harp on as far as like when I talk to the parents about it. So, what do you think? It's kind of kind of twofold for me. Uh-huh. 
because what I've always said is if you're good, they go find they gonna find you. They gonna find you fast. Yeah. But also you have to put yourself in a position to be seen. Right. So if you're good enough to play on some of these travel teams, sponsored by Nike or Adidas or whatever, mm-hmm. they in Vegas, all these different places do that. Right. And stay consistent in it. Right. Stay consistent with that one AU program, which shows some consistency in you staying with the school. Right. Instead of transferring and going here and going there because you stuck that early. That's going to kind of send a red flag on your resume. It's like, why is he not with me? Is right. it him? Is it the coach? You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say, yeah, if you're good enough, get into it and stay there. But you know, right. people always want to play with their homeboys too. Homeboys might not be good enough. To go play EYBL. Facts. I'm going to play YBO with them a couple yeah. of songs. Yeah. And nominate that. And then I'm going to go back EYBL. It just depends. But if you're good enough, stay in that platform where them guys are being talked about. Yeah. And pick them off the list as you go if you can. Right. So I don't, I don't know as far as like how you guys seen as far as on the AU circuit, but as far as for me, I had to go trial for an AU team. I had to go trial for the Alabama Challenge. Like they sent something in the mail to my high school coach. My high school coach told me, like, hey, you know, I don't know too much about this AU team, but, you know, they sent this to me. And I went and, I went and tried out. Like, so I played pickup, who had, like, 30, 35 points in the scrimmage. Like, in the sprints, I was, like, first in sprints and stuff like that because I always had the underdog mentality. Like, where I come from, it's a small town. Like, nobody yeah. knows where, where it's at. So came on at the end of my 15 and other team, like, played toward the end of the season. And also uh, my 15 on the coach told my 16 on the, on the coach, he was like, man, keep up with this Cooper kid. He stay out there in them sticks, but he going he to be solid. So I would definitely say, if, you know, if they can't, if they, if you don't find, if the A team don't find you, like definitely go, you know, trial for these different, different uh, programs. Because once you get on and once they uh, put you in front of these coaches that, you know, looking for guys, like that's definitely, I would say the best route to go for sure. Yeah, I think uh, I started out with the Birmingham match in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Coach founded in Birmingham. And I yeah. went to uh, Alabama Ice for a little while. Yeah, okay. And then I went from the Ice to the first year of the challenge. I ended up leaving and going to Huntsville. Playing with Alabama Laser. Alabama oh, Laser, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. I'll say how I probably got out was with the Lasers because. My entire AU team went Division One, except for one guy. Who was all on that squad then? Who was all on that squad? Me, Erwin Dudley. Okay. TV, Sydney Ball with the UAB. Okay. Ah, uh, Sydney Ball. Sydney Ball was coaching when I was playing. Yeah, okay, yeah. 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 Show him my age. <laughs> <laughs> so, you got it. Terrence Woods, who went to Tennessee. Yeah. Then you got our mom and star, rest in peace, who was at Kentucky and transferred with the Louisville. Okay. Then we had some younger guys. We went to uh, Cincinnati, Chad Moore. Okay. So, I had yeah, was yeah, was And it was one of the things to where we didn't even win a lot of tournaments. Just because it was so much we just was hooping. And yeah. If we kind of felt like this coach was here to see such and such, we just let them go. Forget winning the game. Hey, go, go put on so you can, you know, go do your thing. Right, yeah. Because really, Bama was on me to me to Irwin from the beginning, so we kind of felt like we were we were good. We going to go somewhere. Right, yeah. So what everybody else trying to do? We <laughs> right. go to a different state. Hey, building over here or Georgetown, whatever. But that's how I pretty much got that AD program right there. Not any shades in the other ones. Yeah. But 12, 13 out of that 15 man roster that division one. Yeah, them folks are following this around. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so were you were you and uh Irwin Dudley, did y'all have like conversations on like playing with playing with each other on, on the same team as far as in college? Yeah, because he he didn't have many guys in his circle. You know, he's from Union Town. He didn't have many guys who played in the division for the episode. There was really no one to ask. You know, I had Ann, I had Roger, 
You know, I've even had Coach Scott, Coach Scott was a new to me coming up before he went to UAB and I don't know. Right. Just me being a young kid around the Birmingham area. He was around. And I played youth games for him. Yeah. With the South Carolina and World Youth Games. So we always had that background. He gave the students on how, kind of how to conduct, how things would look, how recruiting may go. Right. And Irwin just kind of thinking back that. And see, me was pretty much like, hey, I'm just going with y'all. Because yeah. I don't know what other officer he had. He basically got us academic, not, not sports wise, but he was like, I'm going with y'all. I'm moving in and made the impact that we need. Mm. So that's big that for the people that's going to be listening, as far as like the parents and the kids, like you definitely want to have like a, a mentor that can help you along that process because, yeah, I mean, it gets stressful at times. And for me personally, you know, yeah, I had, you know, people in my life, but as far as somebody that, you know, were in the place as far as what I'm trying to get to, to be able to give me advice, like, I didn't really have that as much, but I did have people in place, you know, as far as to say, like, hey, you know, this is what the roster like as far as, you know, they got a couple of seniors on the team, so in, in, in your position, so you know, you know, they go get the minutes and stuff like that. So definitely being able to have somebody to, you know, mentor you and be in your ear like along that process because, you know, you, you only know what you only know. So making sure that you have somebody that can give you that wisdom like like your mentor is doing for you is, is definitely important. So uh, so let's switch gears a little bit as far as, you know, Alabama basketball, of course, you know, with everything that they did this year, you know, as far as being like um, regular season champs, SEC champs, and you know, making it to the Sweet 16. I know you guys did the same thing back when you was hooping. So talk a little bit about, you know, Coach Nate Olsen's, Nate Olsen as far as, you know, what he even did this year and, uh, like, how fast he done accomplished the things that he done accomplished. Honestly, I didn't know much about Buffalo or Nate Oates coming in. <laughs> right. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Probably like a lot of us. Mm-hmm. But you didn't want to sit and just say it ain't going to work because you're not familiar with it. Right. On the analytical side of it, you know, we've seen it professionally with Phoenix Suns, the Houston Rockets. Right. They didn't get it done. Right, yeah. You know, some exciting games, probably a few Western Conference championships in there. But this is the first time I've ever studied analytics work. Yeah. Mainly because we play defense. Right. If you look at that Phoenix Suns team or the Houston Rockets team in the last three, four years, they wouldn't guard nobody. Right. <laughs> right. So now we lock up and we're making the three ball as opposed to some of the mid-range skills that we give them. Right. It worked. Yeah. I honestly was surprised with how well they were so thinking. Yeah, I know... Uh... I talked about it on the first episode with Trevor and Levi. I know, like, after the LSU game, you know, we were shooting pool in the back, and he was like, he was like, cool, let me show you this. So, of course, everybody know, like, he was a math teacher. He was a math teacher for X amount of years. He was like 15 plus or something crazy like that. Right. But um, he was like, cool, in the first 10 seconds, we're top five in the country in points per possession. In the last 10 seconds, this is what we do on points per possession. So, if you ever see me getting on to, like, my team, I'm telling them to shoot the ball. And as far as for me, that's foreign for me because when I was hooping, <laughs> I was well, yeah, outside, screen and roll, outside, screen and roll, my hey. back, screen and roll, come on. Yeah. So uh, I was like, man, it, it must be nice playing that offense because, you know, as far as for them to get the, get the shot up in the first seven to ten seconds, I can only imagine. And then, I mean, with y'all, y'all was hooping too back in the day. You eat dub all y'all, so – so talk a little bit about that run when, you know, y'all was going to the Sweet 16. Yeah, we had athletes like that. Much like I was telling Gary Harris, I was messing with him. Uh, I had did his radio show one morning. Mm-hmm. Messed with him. I was like, yeah, we'll beat this team. We we match up. Same plan style, but we're a little bit bigger. Right. But if, I mean, we ran the UCLA career, kind of the, which every coach from high school to college knows that system. Yeah, that's it, right, right. And we did it for three years. For three years for me, four for for those who stay for this team. But I'm like, man, 
if we'd have had anything come up, it would cut up through. I mean, we was already on the average in the high eighties, maybe nineties. Mm-hmm. You tell me we can come down to Super Bowl within the first seven seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. That'd have been we probably would have had some trouble. It's like, bro, pass the ball like because <laughs> everybody getting I, I had. So you tell me we can shoot it within the first five to seven, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so I'm logo with that thing. Yeah, right, right. You logo on it before still. Man, before still. <laughs> so I know I was uh, doing a little research and coming out the gate, your freshman year, you're averaging 13, your, your sophomore year, you're averaging 17, your junior year, you're averaging 14, and then you went on to enter your name in the draft. Like, so you was a bucket coming out the gate. So talk about, I know we was talking a little bit off air as far as like different, you know, gyms you done played in. Talk about the craziest gym you played in to where, uh, you know, you pretty much can't hear nothing. So I know for me, it was Kentucky. But talk a little bit as about that. Like, we, we don't have any film on it. We don't have a picture, but we all know what happened because it was a Jefferson Pilot game. I don't know if you remember Jefferson Pilot used to come on. Okay. Well, 12 o'clock was the first little SEC game. And it went on <laughs> at like 3. <laughs> we was at 12 o'clock slot. Mm-hmm. We played on the road. And, you know, Pete Maravich Center, Nice. The, the student section was kind of close to the court, so you can kind of hear everything they were saying. Yeah. Game was kind of back and forth for a little while, but I remember particularly this one student with the basketball head uh, mask around. Yeah. Just with the eyes to them. Yeah. Just, just yelling stuff, yelling yeah. stuff. And I remember the basket basketball one, one back, and I said, boy, well, what you hear? Dub was like, yeah, I heard it. And I was like, maybe that's the game. I'm going to go see back. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, what? And then he was switched out and went to our man. Yeah. So, game going on. I remember I hit a step back three in the corner. I kind of turned to their bench and looked at them. But their student section was on the opposite side in front of our bench. And they were still talking, still talking. And I remember we wore, horn went off, and I was walking across the scores table. Yeah. To go into the student section to yeah. see about old. But uh, the sheriff grabbed me. Hold on, this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait. No, I'm going to say. <laughs> hold on, wait. This was after the game. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> no, after the game. Yeah. Going to see back. Yeah. All went out. Yeah. With no shaking hand. Yeah. I went right that way. Yeah. So my way to get that way was to go over the score thing. Yeah. But so you man. so you was about to be the Detroit versus Indiana bra before the bra before. <laughs> I mean, it, it probably wouldn't have got that far, but yes, yeah, right. George Burns. Right. And I'm like, okay, that's a little further than the sport. Right, exactly. Right. And I, I gotta go see what's up with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So on TV, what TV show was our coach that got into my station. Mm-hmm. And they showed me getting pulled off the school stage. Yeah. And then the credits came up. <laughs> and then it went to commercial. <laughs> so if you ever hear a lot of times people talk about me and the LSU game on the road, that's what it is. But we can't find a picture. We can't find an even footage of that game. Yeah. Anything. That's crazy. So for the people that's going to be watching this, so just to give y'all like an inside scoop, the fans be reckless. Like they say whatever... <laughs> Like they want to say to us, so we gotta we gotta be calm, cool, and collective. But for me, it was the Tennessee. Like so, we played Tennessee I on the road. To Tennessee. <laughs> we played Tennessee on the road, <laughs> and so I ain't gonna say the coach name. I'm not gonna say the coach name, but we was doing like a uh, roll and replace. So we rolling up to the wing. They throw us the ball. Like we pull up for three or whatever. So mm-hmm. not gonna say the coach name. He was like, "Cool." When when I threw it to you, just fire back at me. He like, don't, he like, don't ask why, just, just do it. Man, I fired back out on, he he missed the ball on purpose just so right. it could hit that one guy that was talking. Right. It was crazy, like the stuff he was saying, it was, it was ridiculous. <laughs> so, you do it man, in the middle of no nothing. Don't know nothing. So, man, I threw the ball, man, in the midst of and hit the guy, man. It was so, it was so funny, bro. I like, man, I said, man, coach, you crazy. But, but anyway, so, 
So let's go into the funny memories. So without getting anybody in trouble, I know you guys are OG, you know, a lot of you guys married, <laughs> you know, got wife and kids. So what's some of the funniest, funniest memories that you can remember? Yeah, we, um, we, we leave them doors that I can <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were uh, going to play Purdue in the NIT. Okay. My sophomore year. Yeah. So we had our own planes that we would leave us to Africa yeah. with. At this particular time, we just flew charter yeah. or whatever. I guess yeah. you know. We got on a flight with Montel Joy. Okay. This is how we do. Do it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know that whole flight, we sang that song. Now yeah. we're on different parts of the plane. Yeah. So somebody get a verse in the front. Somebody have a verse <laughs> on the side. Somebody have a verse behind. Yeah. We did the coach could, just couldn't figure out what was going on. They laughed, but we did that almost the whole so, time. So, so he didn't know who that was. He didn't know who we were. Uh, well, I mean, we had on the job. No, I'm saying, I'm saying, coach. I'm saying, coach. Nah, coach, coach, know who Montez Jordan was. We had to uh, pull it up on him. Yeah, on the, and let him know what we were doing. So he laughed and all, but we did that the whole flight. Did he, he, was did cool he hear? About it. We were taking a picture later on when we got out. Did he hear? Did he Montez? hear out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were sitting all around. Him. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It ain't like he was in first class. We was in the back. Nah, he was in the middle of all of us. And we just was going six for six when we were sitting there saying it didn't pause for seven. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. So uh so let's go as far as I know we we talked a little bit about we talked a little bit about as far as, you know, advice to the to the youth, you know, as far as the young rockers are growing up. So as far as, you know, just say for for college. A college kid is watching this, you know, as far as with you, you know, uh, getting drafted in the second round, you know, being a nine, 10 year pro vet, you know, uh, playing professional basketball. Uh, what would be the advice you would give to a, a college guy that has the opportunity to play pro? And on top of that, being able to uh, what advice would you give to him as far as on the, on the business aspect of it? Because me and you both know, you know, how it is as far as the, the business side of sports. So. What advice would you give to a college kid as far as those two aspects? I mean, not only just the business side, but just doing the work to get there. Just right. understand you can't be available to everything and everybody. Mm. I know when you went to school, a lot going on. You know, this part of that part. I mean, not with COVID, not hopefully y'all ain't going with that. <laughs> right. <laughs> or just get people in your circle that understand the work you got to put in. And understand that they don't miss you because you got to get the work right. Right. You might miss these events socially, or we might not be able to be on the phone with some other shit. Right. Just get you a good group that understand that. There's nothing like having somebody pulling on you to be available and it's taking you away from your goal, whether they can be a female. Right. Remember, friend down the block you grew up with. They just gotta understand. Mm, facts. It's on the on the business part, you are the business. Facts. Just from your your makeup, your stature, your body, your face expressions, your hand. Right. You are the business. So for whatever it is you may be trying to produce or show out to the public, it's you first. Before that extra product you hold in your hand. Right. So whatever you putting out now, it's still gonna linger on towards that. Facts. So as far as what you're doing today, you think it may hinder your product later on, you gotta find a way to get away from it. Facts. And just to just to piggyback off what you're talking about. So your brand is definitely important. Like you might not think about it now, but if you, you know, not putting the right, right image out there and just being yourself, it's definitely gonna play a part on down the road. They de- it definitely go, it go, it go, go with you. But you know, on the business side of things, you know, you definitely want to use your your mind and your intuition when it comes to that, and don't put your heart into it because, you know, if you put your heart into it, you know how people get. You know, people be lying all the time, people pulling and tugging at you. 
But if you just focus, yeah. at, if you just focus on the craft, the biz is gonna take care of itself. So that would be my advice as far as on that. Like, what you think about that? Yeah, yeah. because it'd be a lot of people just scheming to get your life, right? For however long they think it may be hot right now, so let me go. Show my face or take this picture, or post this on the ground, and boost what I got going on. Then I'm right. Home. Yeah. So just more or less, just have your foundation you can just rooted in some people you can trust. Right. So people who trying to get it out the mud, just the same as you. And out of bunch of yes, man. You're trying to get something off the ground. You need people who are kind of already grinding and successful. Mm-hmm. They're trying to take advantage of people that think you naive and don't know. Right. That's why I just, just say find some people that just grind in the same as you. Y'all stay true to each other. So you keep moving forward. Facts. So uh so we get we get towards the end. So the thing is, you know, as far as you know, we talking about your story, talking about like the different highlights, talking about your most memorable moments, funniest moments. So the thing I also want people to know as far as the the other side to it, the, you know, the adversity we had to overcome, the challenges we had to overcome. So give the people that's going to be listening and watching this, uh, you know, some adversity that you had in, in your career that you had to overcome to where, you know, young Rogers are or just the young kids that are going to be listening and watching this, like give, it, give them some, you know, a challenge that you had to overcome that, you know, not too many people know about. I mean, I say for myself, man, like we look at, the points I scored within three years at Bauman and all right. the that I personally and as a team we accomplished my first two months of school I almost got sent back to Birmingham. Oh, for real? <laughs> for real? What happened? Because I mean, you know, I'm from a small high school. Right. My gym is probably eight of but with, with a kitchen in the middle. Because it's, it's actually a hold on, hold on, hold on. How big was it? Hold on, hold on. We die. Go fast. The court, is, the court is probably eight or four feet. Okay. You say with a I'm, kitchen I'm a, in the middle? I'm going to find you a uh, kitchen center to you. All right, Central okay. Central Park, Christian, in Alabama. The big church sitting on the hill, and they just so happened to have a gym. But yeah. the gym was also the cafeteria for, you know, after church events or whatever bank they were at. Mm, okay. That's great. Then they decided to turn it into a school. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to get a basketball program. So that's what I was telling you earlier about the missions they used to do. How some of the foreign kids got here. Yeah. So we didn't have a weight room. The gym is not your standard high school, definitely not a collegiate size floor. Mm, right. So I played there for two years. Go to Bama. We started working out. You know how the workouts work. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everything is structured. <laughs> right. You go lift weights, you go. Study hall, preseason conditioning, all that. Yeah. All that. Yeah. I have none of that ever in life. <laughs> yeah. No preseason high school workouts, no no weight workouts in high school, just who. Mm. So when I get to Bama, we up preseason conditioning. All right, we're going to go play five on five. Ooh. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm sleep. <laughs> yeah. And you know, we used to have this where we might be doing the ab circuit. The whole team, you can't quit until we done. Right. You, we start over. Guess who cracking up? <laughs> OG Run. Guess, <laughs> OG guess run. the reason we got to start over? <laughs> Sing, OG Run. Sing is pissed off. Yeah. They grind too. Right, yeah. You know, got the middle 42, the, when they reach a certain point, they know how to get over that hump. Right. Me, everything hurt. I'm going to quit. <laughs> yeah. So it went on for maybe like a good month, month and a half. And Gotham would just let everybody leave. Because yeah. honestly, I feel body cramp and it's over. Right, yeah, yeah. I'm tired of penalizing the team, post let them go. Let me lay here and we'll figure it out. Yeah. So we had a lot of workouts, just me and him. <laughs> just coming to Jesus on somebody. Yeah, That's why I try to tell everybody like they see the glitz and glamours when it comes to D one basketball, but when it comes to that preseason conditioning, it make you question if you still want to hoop or like you know 
<laughs> is this real? Just want to do anything else, period. Right. <laughs> right. Like, after that, I got to walk the study hall. Yeah. Go do that. He back to the room. They got to get up in the morning. We work. Got to do it all over again. <laughs> so I'm like, bro. Like, hey, I don't mean to tell me this part. <laughs> oh, and they recruit you. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out, you know, Godfrey, he stuck with me. Yeah. We sat there, Ham Court and Coleman, and he was like, hey, I believe in you. So you just want to hear it work. Yeah. So you get it right. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. And, you know, we here today. Mm. That's dope. That's dope. So especially for, like, the parents, you know, and the kids that feel like they don't have, like, the resource, the resources and stuff like that, just like you were saying, if you're good enough, they're going to find you. But also putting yourself in a position to be found. So with you, you know, small court at Central Park Christian having a kitchen in the middle of the court, using it as a cafeteria at the time. That, that's crazy. I didn't I didn't know that part. That's crazy. Yeah. You, <laughs> they used to play crazy. the team. They used to play it. They used to call like we going to the kitchen. We playing in the kitchen. Because there's yeah. honestly an oven at half court. <laughs> so what y'all do with the oven? In the little window where they, they put the trays out. Yeah. I'm gonna get you a picture, no doubt. Yeah. It's, it's about 84 feet. Yeah. And there's an oven right at half court. Bro, definitely send but, me that picture. Send me, send me that picture. <laughs> but it's it's banners in there though. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Like it, it's banners in there, not just me. Yeah. But but time before me and after me with my little brother and everything. Like, yeah. Them 84 feet, they got it done. Yeah. That's the thing I did hear about. I did hear about you guys definitely putting banners in there for sure. So I know, yeah, like, uh, I didn't know that part, though, about the kitchen. KJ. KJ McDaniels. McDaniels. Yeah. KJ, so. Tony even went there for you. Yeah, yeah. And George. See, I didn't know that. Okay. I got you. So, yeah, man. So, I, so what, so as far as a kid that's going to be watching this, like, what's some words of wisdom that you can, you can end this episode on that uh, you can get to the people? Just stay true to you. Mm -hmm. What you want to do. Whatever you may vision at night or kind of see yourself being. Yeah. Stay true to that. And don't get so high on what you need to be the next guy. I don't know what he did. Really. Right. Only know your path and where you're going to get what you need. Mm. Dope. Dope. So that's so this is the end of the episode. I got my OG Rod Grizzard. We both wore 21 at Bama, both with lefties, both with a bucket. You know, so the guys, so make sure that you guys like, comment, share, and also make sure that you guys subscribe to the channel, man. That little red button that's on the side, make sure you guys click that for me. And this is another episode, and, I, and I'll see you guys on the next episode.